Happy days, happy people. Cody here, and welcome to your anatomy lesson. Today, we're going to be speaking about the wondrous thing called fascia. So fascia is a fairly new phenomenon. By new, it's probably come about in the, ne the last, I don't know, several years. Uh, it was something that in the beginning, we thought it was just a separate piece of connective tissue. And so we realized that it is the connective tissue that runs through everything. So your fascia is almost like the webbing that keeps your body together, that keeps your body pliable, movable, and that keeps your body strong. And this is the interesting thing about fascia, is its intelligence. It knows when to be soft, when to be hard, and when to be flexible. And it knows how to distribute different densities throughout the body. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing organism within the body. And that's what's interesting, too, is it seems to have its own form of intelligence. We work with it, but it knows what it's doing. It communicates to us, and we communicate to it, whether it be through mental awareness or through physical stimulation. So whenever you do any yoga practice, you're working always with fascia. So whether you're strengthening, whether you're releasing, it is all to do with fascia. How, why, and what, I'm going to explain to you right now. So first, you just get a basic idea of what fascia is. So here's your skin. A little bit of hair on the skin. Here are your muscles. In between that, there's some fat for sure, there's some adipose tissue, but then there's also this line of fascia. Fascia is like a gelatinous substance. So it's not too liquid, but it's not too solid. It's not like cartilage, it's not like bone, it's not like a ligament, it's not like a tendon. It's somewhere in between all of those things. And it also changes its density accordingly. And we're going to speak about what changes that in a second. But for now, I just want you to think of a sandwich, right? Think of a piece of bread and another piece of bread. And then think of placing jam in between that bread, fresh jam. And then you place those breads on top of each other. So the top layer can maybe be your skin. The jam in between is the fascia itself. and then. The other piece of bread can be your muscles. When the jam starts to harden, right? So say you leave the, the sandwich out in the sun for a while, and the jam starts to become stiff. Then you try and move the bread off of the other piece of bread. The bread's going to break. It's going to crumble, or it's just going to be very difficult to move. This is essentially the same thing that happens with fascia when you leave it unattended to. Unattended to just means when you sit or are stagnant in a specific area of the body for a long period of time, the, the gelatinous substance starts to crystallize. These crystals make it more difficult for it to move. And so whenever you think of fascia and stiffness, this is usually why you are stiff in the morning. It's because you haven't moved and your fascia has crystallized slightly. What also adds to this is dehydration. So fascia is also a composite of most of the water in your body. It is the reason why the water isn't just falling down to your feet when you stand up. The fascia holds it. It's kind of like a web on a mountain dewy morning. Right? So if you've ever seen a spider web with little drips of water on it, this is kind of what fascia looks like. It's also like a web in the sense that it is very, very complicated, but at the same time geometric. So if you look at it at a very basic level, it just looks like threads. But if you look at it at a more holistic level, you can see that this threading has created some sort of geometric shape. Um, so fascia also helps us move in our geometry. It helps us create shapes, and it helps us move out of and into different shapes in our body on a macro level, on a big level, and on a very small, small, small level. The thing with fascia to be thought about, too, is even though I've just shown you the skin, the fascia, and the muscle, it is also in the skin, and it is also in the muscle. So fascia pretty much goes through everything. Just how I have mentioned that there are muscle fibers, what wraps around these muscle fibers is fascia. Right? So if you know what a sausage looks like, the fascia 
is the thing that wraps itself around the sausage, right? That skin of the sausage. It is like that, and it runs through our entire body. And so whenever we work with any sort of movement, we're working with fashion. How we're working with it is we are trying to make it do what we want to do in our body. So like I said, we wake up in the morning and we're dehydrated because all of the water has gone back into our core and has gone out of our limbs and has returned back into the spine and the intervertebral discs of the spine. We need to bring the water back into the rest of our body through the fascia. And so ways to do that, one is starting to heat up the body. So as you know, with any sort of heat applied to fluid, it starts to make the fluid move and starts to make it boil. So that boiling starts to create pressure. That pressure starts to create movements, just how like water moves through pipes. This is how water moves into the fascial linings of our body. The other way to start doing it is rehydrate. So just obviously drink water. This is why water is so important, especially in the morning, to just gulp down, not too much, but a fair amount of water before you start your day or any sort of movement exercise and to keep on rehydrating throughout the day. The other part is the warming up. And this is why warming up is key, because if you don't warm up, you're going to have a whole bunch of what we call fascial knots or fascial bundles. Right, so fascial knots are more like when there is a dry piece of fascia and it is so dry that it has created a knot in the body. Right, so if you can imagine kind of like a um, sewer system getting clogged up or a river getting clogged up, wherever the clog has happened, after that it is dry. It doesn't receive any water anymore. Thus, there is also no more life or movement. This is the same in the body. If there is a knot in the body, it makes it more difficult for you to move with that knot. This knot also can eventually turn into a bundle, and a bundling is when there is so much knots that it's a bundle of knots, and it actually starts to constrain your movements, your range of movements, or your ROM. So we're going to actually give a brief demonstration on what this looks like in a second, and it's the reason why I'm wearing my lovely getup today. Um, not for fashion purposes, but rather for practical purposes. So you can see a little bit how fascia works in the body. But before we go there, I want to mention a few more properties. So yes, it is a connective tissue. It is probably the connective tissue. Um, we don't know where it ends. We don't know where it begins. It seemingly starts everywhere and ends everywhere, depending on where you want to throw a point. There is more fascial bundling in the Achilles tendons and heel and at the feet and at the crown of the head and at the points where limbs are formed and tendons are formed. So at the joints, there's a little bit more bundling there just because there's more connective tissue there. It is also seeming that the fascia is what determines what other connective tissue becomes from a young age. So as we are an embryo and we start off as cartilage, when we start to turn into bone, it seems like the fascia or the intelligence of the fascia is what tells your organism that this needs to be bone, this needs to be muscle, this needs to be tendon, and this needs to be ligament. Um, it is also all three of these properties at the same time. So it is elastic, plastic, and firm, or it can be. And this is where the intelligence comes in. It depends on the tensile stress that you put on it and some other factors of just some inherent or innate um, triggers that it has through your nervous system. So a nice way to think of it is if you've ever done this experiment as a child where you take water and you mix it with um, cornstarch or corn flour. When you put your hand in slowly through the cornstarch or corn flour, it is easy and you can put your hand in. It's maybe like a more muddy type density. But if you try and slam your hand into it, then it becomes hard and it becomes more like the ground. Fascia acts in exactly the same way. If you try and move it fast, it becomes hard, which is great because this is how we create muscular density through fascia. This is how you can hold yourself up with your fascia in collaboration with your muscles because you can make it firm and it goes firm when it needs to be firm. On the other hand, it can also go plastic so it becomes more pliable, right? So this is when you move slower. So any movements like Qigong or movements where they're a bit more like you're moving with the flow of the fascia, as if you're moving in water, 
the fascia becomes more plastic, and in a way, it allows you to be more mobile. It also starts to create a better flow within the body. It's a reason why movements like Qigong or yoga done at a very mindful pace creates more of an aligned bodily state than if you do dynamic hardcore exercising because what that does is it slams the fascia together, then it releases, and then there's a flood of fascia. And the flood of fascia is also how you get your flood of endorphins and dopamine and serotonin and all the lovely hormones that make you feel great after a good exercise. But a more subtle-based exercise creates a rhythmic flow in the body, and so you'll feel more balanced afterwards. And that balance lasts longer, too, rather than just lasting for a few hours, maybe. It's also just less damaging on the muscle fibers simultaneously. And then it is also elastic, right? So it can also be like a tendon where it pops and brings itself back. It can be springy. This is in very dynamic movements, right? It's basically a combination of firm and plastic. It's from going firm to plastic really, really fast by going dunk, dunk, holding and releasing in a very, very quick space of time. And again, learning how to control your body's full body fascia instead of just aiming at one individual point is going to help you use your body more holistically. So this is, for me, the biggest takeaway from fascia is that, I'll even write it down, everything is connected. So fascia connects through everything in your body. This fascial connection brings everything together. And so that means that if I press here, it's going to affect here. If I press here, it could affect here. Or if I have a bundle here, it can affect my movements in other places. And just to show you how much a bundling at one point can affect you somewhere else, we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration now. So I'll put this pen down, and I'll get myself into my fascial suit. This is a homemade fascial suit. I think you can actually buy real fashion suits online if you want to. But basically, I'm just going to make this as skin tight as possible. And you'll get to see a little bit about how fascia works. So there's also a lot of videos that do the same thing. Um, you can find this on YouTube. But I thought it would just be nice of us all to see it. So I don't also usually do lectures in my yoga pants. This is just especially for you guys. So it'd be better actually if it was a onesie and uh, this was all connected. There we go. Okay. Right, so now you can see this is kind of like my fascia. You can see how it moves a little bit like it. It needs to be a bit tighter, but it'll do the job. So you'll see how now even my range of motion is just a slightly more limited because it's even been tucked in here. But you can see how this kind of moves like fascia would move. It's a bit elastic, and then it goes hard dunk, when it needs to be hard. But we're going to see what happens when we get a bundle. So I'm going to ask my friend Antonio to come up. Everyone, this is Antonio. Um, and he is just going to hold me over here, and he's going to pretend to be a fascial bundle, right? So he's going to just grab me here as tight as he can. Good. And so this is what a fascial bundle, obviously exaggerated, but it would look like in your body. So imagine you have a tension here, right, in your oblique, in the muscles there. Maybe you just do too much um, side crunches or something like this, or you just tend to have tension here. So now the tension's here, right? But now see if I try and move my arm. See how it's creating so much tension there, my range of motion is actually stopped. So I can't even go any further than this without maybe tearing my shirt. And then even if I just try to lift my arm, right? It stops me there. I can't go any, any further, especially even if I make this tighter. So if I have to hold on to that and try and lift, it creates a whole bunch of tension around that entire chain of body. And now even see what happens. So imagine if this was twisted and I tried to do a forward fold. So I do a forward fold. Look how it stops me from going down. I can't even go all the way down. And it's pulling up into my spine. And so now if Antonio had to release, the range of motion is there. Now I can go all the way there, no tension, no tension. 
Forward fold is easy. Super simple. Thank you so much. So this is the idea that I'm trying to point out to you guys, that that small little bundle, it was just in that spot, just over here, made all the other movements that I tried to do more difficult. And this is what happens in your body, not only here, but everywhere. If there's a tension in the shoulder, if there's a tension in your thigh over here, it's going to make all of the movements harder to do. So this again comes into another expression that I like to use, but I've also changed this expression. And sometimes, and I'm going to say sometimes, sometimes where you think it is, it isn't. Where you think it is, it is not. Right? So all that means is sometimes I think, oh, the tension that I'm getting when I'm doing here and it's creating tension here in my shoulder is because I have tension in my shoulder. But it's actually because there's a bundle here. Or sometimes in my forward fold because my, my hamstrings are being tightened or my back is curving, I think it's my back or I think it's my hamstrings. But no, it's here. And this is because fascia works in a way where tension is applied throughout the whole body. So our body is like an architecturally designed bridge. Right? So you know how bridges take tensile stress and they distribute the tensile stress throughout all of the columns and mechanisms that used to hold it up? Maybe think of a famous bridge like the San Francisco Bridge and it has all those long, really big wires that hold it up. This is exactly how our body works. If there was just one wire holding up everything, it would break like that. And not one wire is holding all their weight. They're all taking them equally distributed. But if there is weight applied on one of those wires more than the other, then all of the whole system is going to shift. The whole bridge could start to twist and break if that had to happen. And the same works in the body. A small little bundle somewhere is going to create tension everywhere else and it's going to make it more and more difficult to move. And so what do we do about this again in yoga is all the things I've just mentioned. One, we bring awareness to it. Two, we start to move around those areas. So we start to feel where the tension is and start to bring length and space into those areas. We also warm up the whole body. You need to get the whole body warm. It's no use just focusing on one spot all the time. Yes, focus on that spot, but also focus on everywhere else because it's all connected. And this finally comes into the paradox of everything. Um, so paradox just means two opposing things that occur at the same time. Um, and the paradox is that sometimes where you think it is, it is. So sometimes if you have pain in the shoulder, it is in the shoulder. If you have tension in the wrists, it is in the wrists. But sometimes it isn't. And sometimes you do need to focus on warming up just one spot and just dealing with it. And simultaneously, you also need to focus on the whole body. So when we think of anatomy and we think of the body, it's good to keep this in mind. And fascia, for me, is a lovely representation of this because it is so open-ended in its effect and all the areas that it controls. The last thing I'm going to speak about today are fascial bundles. So fascial bundles are bundles that are created not only through physical tension, but through mental and emotional tension. So our brain, through our nervous system, also works in a way that sends electricity and sends triggers into the body and into the muscles and into the fascia. And our emotions too, right? So our emotions can be something that is a bit more different to our brain. It can be through our gut, it can be through our heart, it can be through our other organs. Um, our brain tension seems to come from a level of stress, right? So a level of overthinking. And an interesting thing happens with these two things. So with the emotions, what tends to happen with the emotions is when you have an emotional feeling happen, then that emotional feeling, if suppressed and not released, is sent to an area in the body that does not get used very often. Right? So it's imagine it's like you taking the stuff that you don't want to see and shoving it under your bed because you don't go under your bed. 
very often. So you just put everything that you don't want to see in your beautiful room underneath your bed, but it's still underneath your bed. And it's an interesting art form, actually, feng shui, um, that comes from Zen Buddhism, that is about even removing those things that you can't see in your house because it still has an energy. It still builds up a heaviness in your house. So rather get rid of it or actually clean it up. Even though you can't see it, you can still feel it. And that's the same thing that happens with emotions. Even though you can't see it or even though you can't feel it, it's still affecting you. And it usually affects you in places where you don't use very often. And if we think about areas that we don't use very often as sedentary individuals in this new age world, our hips, right? So we, we sit so much that our butts become numb and our hips become closed. And in the closing of our hips, we also close in our emotions and all our suppressed emotions. Same thing with the chest. Because we're surrounded in our chest, we start to close in with these tensions and bring those emotions with it. And that's why when you do chest openers, you can feel an opening of love because it's a suppression of a love that maybe you've had, but you've not let out. And the same thing for the, the hips. There's maybe a suppression of an emotion that's triggered through your nervous system and muscle that you haven't let out, but through a pigeon um, or through a frog, You've opened up, and now you can release that emotion. And then the other thing, adversely, is the tension through stress. So stress sends trigger points to where the muscles are most often used because it thinks that it needs to be used again. Right? Stress is a very primal reaction to an environmental stimulus of threat, of danger, but because now we're in a world where we give ourselves imaginary and illusory dangers in our mind every single day with the idea of get more money, make more money, make the deadline, be in a good relationship, am I too good, am I too bad, am I good enough for this person, do I need more? These are imaginary dangers that threaten our well-being, but they don't actually. And so we get tense, but we don't release that tension through a physical activity or through any outcome. We just hold it, and because it's an illusion, there is no outcome. And so the tension goes into our body and goes into the areas that we use the most. And so again, as sedentary individuals that mostly sit behind desks, the muscle that we're using a lot of is our muscles to keep us from falling forward from looking at the screen. <laughs> if those muscles were gone, then every time we looked at a Facebook post, we would just fly face first into our phone, which would be kind of funny, but our body doesn't allow for that to happen. And so our tension gets stored up here because our mind says, ah, that's the muscle I need to use the most. That's the muscle that needs to be put into action right now. And so it tries, but there's no release. And so the same is to be said with athletes. Athletes have different tension spots according to which muscles they use the most. Rock climbers, maybe their lats or fingers or forearms. Runners, maybe their psoas or their hips muscles. Fighters may be, again, their core muscles or their shoulders from being held up so much. And so the tension goes there without the activity even being done, and it makes us tense. And that's why the last thing I'm going to say about fascia is all the physical things that we can do, qigong, yoga, rolfing, which is by taking a ball or a foam roller and rolling it, on your thighs, on your arms, using tennis balls, using suction cup therapy, acupuncture, a Balinese massage, all of these things that can help our fascia release. The one thing that probably does a better job than all of that in combination with that is meditation. And yes, I'm an advocate of meditation, not only for its spiritual and mental uses, but also for its fascial uses it releases the fascia in the body because the fascia is affected also by mental things. So if you meditate, you relax your mind. If you relax your mind, you relax your body and the electricity that is being sent out by your mind and the nervous system. So keep that in mind. Everything is connected, not only in the body, but also in your mind. So it's no good just going into yoga and just smashing out an awesome vinyasa class and being like, yeah, I feel good. But then not taking the time to meditate and release your thoughts. Then going home and still having a chaotic mind. Because the connection is on so many levels that that thing is going to act like a bundle to the rest of your life. 
So just how that restricted me from movement, having a mental bundle is going to stop you and restrict you in your life movements and your mental movements too. And fascia works in this way. So keep this all in mind. Warm up as much as you need to warm up. Keep in mind that <clears throat> fascia is something that you can work with and there's a lot more to learn, but I just wanted to introduce you to some of the terms and the ideas of how fascia works. Be kind to your body, be kind to yourself, be kind to your mind, drink lots of water, move slowly and carefully and mindfully, practice different movement arts, and let your fascia expand and contract so that you can have a healthier, more fluid, more flowing body. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you are at all interested in learning more about yoga or becoming a yoga teacher, then check out our online trainings or even go to one of our live trainings in Copenhagen and Bali. And if you feel like there's something that's urging you to do it, then why not? Follow your flow and keep being awesome. See you soon.